In this video we're going to take a look at uh, the texturing of objects in XSI using the render tree. Um, you're all probably used to applying textures using these uh, options down here, these menu options down here. Here we're going to bypass that and we're going to use the, the render tree directly. We start off with a sphere. Uh, I'm going to get a material for it, a thong material. We get a material, although it looks as though it's got a material on there already, what it's actually doing is inheriting um, the scene material. It doesn't have a material of its own until you apply it. So we get a material so that we, <coughs> so that our object has a material all of its own. It doesn't interfere with anything else in the scene. I'm also going to get a texture projection, a UV texture projection. There we go. Um, with the object selected, I hit key 7, number key 7, and that brings up my floating render tree view. And what we see here is the Fong shader that we've just applied, and it's plugged into the object's material node. Uh, in fact, that material node is rather more than just a material in the sense that we think about materials if we've come from um, Sotomayor's 3D background. This node here is actually a placeholder and it's there so that for the input of anything that could possibly change the appearance of that object there. If I open this up by clicking on the triangle there, um, you can see inputs of volume and environment, contour, displacement, so on and so forth. Um, for materials and texturing, we're going to use the surface input, so I'm going to remove these from here. You wouldn't normally remove those, I'm just taking them out there just to make the whole thing a little bit clearer, and then close that up, bring this over here. Okay, so the Fong node. If I double click on that, it brings up the Fong shaders property page. This is exactly the same property page as would come up if I selected the object and clicked modify shader there. Um, the changes that we make using the menu options down here uh, behind the scenes are actually changing the render tree. Um, so, okay, so Fong property shader there. Um, obviously, if I change the uh, value of the diffuse component there, then the color of the object changes, and that's exactly what you'd expect. But how do we texture it? How do we apply texture to that surface? Well, texturing is all about modifying the color of an object, or texturing in its simplest form at least, is all about changing the color of an object across the surface. And we can do that in the render tree by using a texture map to dr drive the diffuse component um, of that material. I've opened this node up here by clicking on the triangle there, and all of these um, parameters down here correspond to uh, the parameters in the, uh, in the property page. In fact, Every parameter in the property page has a corresponding um, parameter input in the um, Fong shader node over here. Sometimes the names are a little bit different, but essentially every single parameter has a matching uh, parameter in the property page. Um, so, texturing, uh, changing the uh, color across the surface. Well, simple as this. Get a texture. I'm going to use an image texture here. and what I'm going to do is just plug it directly into the diffuse component there, and we'll take a look and see what that does. There we go, we've got a texture. Um, if I unplug it, no texture, straight form, plug it back in again, and diffuse component, really simple. Just a quick look inside the property page for that image there. Um, you're probably familiar with this. Uh, we have the name of the image there, this is the image that's being textured. Here we have a texture projection. This is initially left blank, or it appears to be left blank. If I click on that node there, that's the texture projection that we got right at the start of this exercise. Um, I'm going to set that to that texture projection. Um, if you don't set that, if you leave it blank, then it takes the first projection in the list. In this case we've only got one projection. I like to set that to a sensible value, even if there's only one texture projection in there. Um, it helps keep everything nice and clear. It's not so much of a problem if you've only got one, maybe two textures in there, but if you've got a lot of them in there, it can get quite confusing. You can get lost really easily. So best time to set that UV projection is right at the start when you know what's going on. Um, have a look at the advanced tab in here. The advanced tab is where you set uh, the repeats, the texture repeats. If I change those values to four there, then the texture will repeat four times across there. I can change the way the texture alternates, whether it flip-flops as it goes across, whether it, whether it, as it goes across the surface there. And there's also a UV remap here. Uh, UV remap 
rematch the incoming um, UVs to the values that you place in here. So for example, if I uh, change this to 0.5 here, it's stretching the texture map now. What it's doing is it's, um, it's changing um, the incoming UVs. Any UV value of 1 will be changed to 0.5. Um, in fact, the UV is being multiplied by that. Let's have a look at the top view and you can see exactly what that means. It's stretching the texture right out around the U. If I change that to 2, just because it's set to a maximum of 1 doesn't mean to say that you can't make it greater than uh, 1. If I change that value to 2, there you go. It's um, multiplied the UVs by 2 which has had the effect of um, squeezing the texture, in fact. And as I uh, change that to more values there, you can see it uh, squashing it down. I can do the same with these uh, numbers in here. You can't quite see that if I um, orbit round this here. It's tucked away at the bottom there, so it's uh, it's an it's a nice way of either cropping or squeezing your texture without going into the um, into the crop editor in here. Probably don't use that very much. Um, let's put it back where we found it. Once you're inside the render tree. Um, you've got very fine levels of control over how you texture. Um, we've textured the diffuse component, which is a fairly standard um, method of texturing. I think, in fact, if you do it from here, um, it will probably be uh, driving the ambient texture as well. So we've got that, and it just brightens that up a little bit. I can take the uh, diffuse component out there, and we'll just drive the ambient component of it. Um, anything that has the same um, color in here. This is a color output here going into a color input. You can drive any one of those that you want. You can drive the specular component if you want. Um, that's a little bit bright in there. If I make it darker in the diffuse you might be able to see what's going on. There we go. We're using the texture to dr drive the specular color in there. Pull it out and it's all white. Put it back in there and it's all nice and shiny. I can drive the transparency there. Uh, that's driving the transparent. Let's put a little bit of colour in there so that we can see it a little bit more clearly. There we go. Um, it's driving the transparency um, of the surface. You can just pick out the back in there. I can drive the reflectivity as well. And you can't, it's not immediately apparent what's going on there, but uh, believe me, it is driving the reflectivity. There's nothing to reflect in this scene, it's all entirely black. Let's. Um, have a look at another scene that I've got here uh, where you can see how that works a little bit more clearly. Um, again, we've got a sphere, uh, but I've put some textures in this scene. Let's bring up the uh, render preview there. Um, don't take too much notice of what's going on in the background. That's just a texture so that uh, we've got something to look at. Um, the sphere is the same sphere as we had before, same UV projection, and on that sphere I've placed a grid texture uh, here. It's an image texture and it looks like that. Um, take that out, plug it into the transparency and what's happening there is that all the white areas of the texture are making the object completely transparent, 100% transparent and where the texture is black it's making the object uh, completely opaque. Uh, texture map driving the transparency, that's quite a nice grid effect. Um, take it out, put it into the reflectivity and where the texture map is pure white it's making our sphere completely uh, reflective and where it's black it's making it completely non-reflective. Um, any values in between would be um, slightly less um, reflective. Um, 
So that's quite a nice way of um, controlling surface parameters and just to show that you don't, when you're texturing, we're not really talking purely about uh, color, we're talking about texturing all sorts of parameters on there. And that's simple texturing in uh, XSI.